Man, it's our second full day in Las Vegas today. There's so much cool stuff to see here. One of the places though that I could not deal without seeing while I was here is this building right here over my shoulder. This building is the National Museum for Organized Crime and Law Enforcement. It's a mob museum. It's incredible. That's what we're checking out today here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Mob Museum. The Mob Museum actually is sitting right next to our hotel, but uh, I knew when I saw it yesterday, I had to come check it out. It just looks too cool. I mean, how can you pass up a museum about organized crime? You can go in and stand behind this, and it looks like you're in a lineup. And then if you go to the other side, it's like mirror glass, so you can't see, you can't see Who's looking at you? <laughs> An old Smith and Wesson 30. Oh, look at the old club. And then uh, the Iron Claw and an Officer Sap. It was used to subdue many suspects. Huh. Oh, some old casino chips. New Orleans. These are oh, these are out of Kentucky and New York. I think they. You would have thought they would have had Las Vegas ones in there. They, oh look, look at the old Bell slot machine and a chuck a luck dice game. Chuck a luck is a gambling game of chance with three dice. With the use of a birdcage hourglass, the gambler is tasked with betting what three number combinations will appear at the bottom. Arizona Club branded die. Wow. <laughs> Too cool. Look, it's a wall. St. Valentine's Day Massacre. That's incredible. I gotta get a picture of that. Uh, let's see, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre was the 1929 Valentine's Day murder of seven members and associates of Chicago's Northside Gang. The men were gathered at Lincoln Park Garage on the morning of Valentine's Day. They were lined up against a wall and shot by four unknown assailants who were dressed like police officers. So, oh, and there's, the, there's bullet holes in it. So the guys were lined up against this wall and shot. And you can even see the bullet holes. There's one over there with blood. With some lead. Yeah, with blood all around it. Look at that. Man, that's crazy. Here's a Tommy gun. The next screening of the film will be in 30 seconds. Shells and bullet fragments. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, here's the victims from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Oh. Oh, that's what these are. These are bullet fragments from the wall and the shells from that were shot. Here's that. The actual bullets pulled out of their bodies. They pulled these out of their bodies, man. And it talks. It says how many gunshot wounds they had. Oh, here's the doctor's reports where they were shot at. So Peter Gussenberg. Was, was shot 11 times, oh, oh man. Wow. Oh, look at these old toys, man. Oh, cool. These are way before my time. Oh yeah, I, I love that movie, Dick Tracy. I love that movie, Dick Tracy. G-Man Automatic, man, that's too cool. You know how much some of these toys are probably worth? Like oh, this yeah. old car here? Oh, that's a cool. And this gun? <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
Oh, here's real ones. A real Tommy gun. 1921 Thompson. There's, that's Dick Tracy right there. 19, yeah. Here's a uh, Winchester 1897 shotgun and a Thompson M1A1 and the first, oh, one of the first bulletproof vests. Oh, it's Al Capone's revolver. After Chicago mob boss Al Capone moved to Miami in 1928, he asked his friend Parker Henderson Jr. to buy him some guns. One of them was this 38 Smith & Wesson revolver. 73 years after putting Capone in prison for tax evasion, IRS agents seized the gun in a 2004 raid of a Kentucky illegal gambling den. This is what I like, is the artifacts. Oh, Mike Malone's handcuffs. Yeah, the office ashtray. Intelligence unit, it says on it. And then, uh, revolver. Oh, it's an electric chair. <laughs> Look at these old tomato sauce cans. It's supposed to be, it's how they like uh, smuggle drugs. They would smuggle it in here like, they would smuggle it in these cans like they were like tomato sauce, but it was really drugs inside of it. That's interesting. Ooh, Bugsy, Bugsy Siegel's glasses. They were owned by Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Siegel was gunned down on June 20th, 1947 in Virginia Hills, Beverly Hills, California. Wow. Sinatra's ashtray. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at, look at the old TV. Yeah, Clark County Sheriff's Department helmets. Clark County, here's hats. There's some boots down there. Custom bridle bit. Oh, here's a slot machine over here. It's a flamingo slot machine. This is the story of Bugsy Siegel and the Flamingo Hotel. Mo Dallet's Key to the City. And here's one of those famous cost, you know, costumes that the girls wear. Mo Sedway and Gus Greenbaum took control of the Flamingo after Bugsy Siegel's murder in 1947. Oh, there's actual real chips. Oh, yeah. It's real casino chips from New York. We, I mean, from here. We were just talking about that earlier. Cool. Too cool. Oh, look at this. Showgirls. From the star, from the Stardust Rider Rocket, Howard Stark. Hughes was living in the Desert Inn when he bought the hotel, and never left until he spirited off to the Bahamas in 1970. So then he bought the Sands Frontier and the Silver Slipper, and opened Landmark in 1969. His properties were sold after his death in '76. This bullet was shot from 38 caliber Colt Cobra revolver that Jack Ruby used to shoot Lee Harvey Oswald on the 24th, 63. The police department in Dallas is corrupt. Wow. Oh, look at the buttons. Eisenhower and Kennedy. The, oh, the gas chamber. It's a gas chamber chair. Nevada was the first state to execute criminals using lethal gas. In fact, it was the first jurisdiction in the world to do so. 24 G. John, a 28-year-old member of the Tong Organized Crime Group in San Francisco, was the first man sentenced to die in Nevada's gas chamber at the state prison in Carson City. John was executed for murdering a rival Tong member in Mena, Nevada. They even have pictures there of their gas chamber. Wow, you could, they could execute, execute two at a time? I mean, they could just get them on out of there, huh? They no lie. Now people sit on death row for a life sentence before they even get killed. Ooh, prison made weapons. Oh, these are cool. Shanks oh. made them out. Of, look, this was out of ink pen. Oh, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah, Plast, plastic spoons. They filed down one end of it. Yeah. Oh, look, Colt Woodsman with a silencer on it. Here's some 1911s. A Roy Demo Machete and Ice Pick, a hitman for New York's Gambino crime family. Oh, that's the guy, the Ice Man, yeah. that they did the yeah. show on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
owned a large collection of sharp weapons that included this machete and ice pick. DeMeo and his crew were linked to more than 100 murders. Many of victims were dismembered and buried in a Brooklyn landfill. So my six, six sticks of dynamite did that. I wonder where that car is now. Obviously it's somewhere because they have a picture of it. Yeah. So obviously it's somewhere. Illegal wildlife trade products. So this is illegal stuff. Reticulated python skin bill. Bad bill. Oh, so these are items that are sold on the underground market illegally. Hippopotamus tusk carved out. Oh, somebody carved into hippopotamus tusk. A mount or a cobra mounted. Various medicinal items. Brazilian rosewood pistol grip. A whale tooth. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I know that. That's creepy. Who would walk around with a purse like that? It's, it's El Chapo's great escape. This talks about how he escaped. Oh, look at that. He dug a hole, went all the way down where they had carts, where he had carts on a motorcycle, on a track, and then it brought him up over here on the other side in Mexico. Wow, that's crazy. So that was the mob museum, but we're not done yet because uh, they tell us down in the basement they have what's called a speakeasy and a prohibition museum as well. That's cool. All right, so we're gonna go. We're, we're gonna go down here, and we're supposed to give them a password. All right, we're not actually gonna knock on a door. We're gonna hit this button right here. Canary. That's where they made illegal alcohol during prohibition. They would use all of this materials to make their alcohol. There's no telephone booth. So we're gonna pull the door and they have the phone here. There's nothing, nothing there. It also has a little fan up here in the corner. If you're on the phone, you can turn on. It's too cool. Oh, the fan works. I don't know how Superman would change clothes in there. It's too tight, but super cool. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the National Museum for Organized Crime and Law Enforcement in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's going to do it for this episode today. We still have a couple more days here in Vegas before we move on somewhere else. I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. I hope you have a great day.